Welcome to the Gifters Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Kai. This podcast is sponsored by the GPS online program, which Forbes has stated helps entrepreneurs become professional speakers. For more information, go to ChristopherKai.com. Our next guest for our Gifters Podcast is Dr. Christopher H. Liu, MD, PhD, who is a highly trained surgeon, serial entrepreneur, investor, speaker, and philanthropist. After a very successful career as an orthopedic surgeon, he fully transitioned into a running a portfolio of businesses. He has built successful passive income, streams of income through real estate, stocks, options, and cryptocurrencies. Dr. Liu, thanks so much for being our gift this podcast, but your story is a gift to the world. Thanks, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be on this podcast. So what's crazy is you are a trained orthopedic surgeon. It takes so many years of education, first at undergrad, then medical school, then residency. So you become an orthopedic surgeon. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to give up this life, Christopher, and be an entrepreneur. What compelled you to do something like that that some people might say, you are crazy, dude? Yeah, it's actually a really crazy story because um, I was brought up to think that you know, you had to follow a successful career path. You had to um, become a doctor, make a lot of money, uh, be very have a very stable income. But then, uh, what I realize now is that I'm not. That wasn't really my passion. I wasn't passionate about it. And what my real passion was was uh, building businesses. So that's either through real estate, stocks, options, and cryptocurrencies. That's great, but what was the turning point? What was the aha moment that you were a doctor and then you said, you know what, I'm done with this life? Yeah, the, it was, the turning point was I was in, I was in residency. I had, I had worked um, 120 plus hours per week. I was staying up 40 hours straight and uh, I was, one day I was post-call. I was tired. I couldn't think. And uh, the chairman called me in and just started yelling at me for a, a small mistake I had made during call. And at that point, I just said, I decided it's the stress isn't worth it. The training isn't worth it. I'm going to really go out and pursue my own dreams. That takes a lot of courage, again, because some people have not gone through so much training, so much investment. So for you, was it like more of a, okay, that was the moment. And then what did you do to, to just get involved with real estate? Like what, what are some of the first steps you did? Because this podcast is all about helping other people live your life, right? Some people right. actually want to be a doctor. Some people want to help people, right? And you did that, but the right. stress and the, the frustration of having this chairperson literally yell at you, I mean, how berating and how insensitive is that for him to do? But now you have this amazing life. So what are some of the first initial steps you did with real estate that you can share with our guests? Well, during medical school, I had I always had a side hustle. I was always, when I wasn't studying for exams, when I wasn't in class, I was always looking at properties. And the thing with the Houston real estate market was that it actually was pretty cheap back then. You know, you could get a two bedroom, two bath condo for 50, 60 grand. So, and it was actually cheaper to buy a condo than actually go rent. So when I, in my spare time, I was looking at condos, I was making offers, I was making deals. I had a condo uh, when I started medical school and with the real estate boom, I was actually at the right time. I was able to buy another property. And from there, I learned about tenant management skills, how to fund your properties, how to renovate your properties and how to create a successful business. You know, your story is really inspiring, Chris, because again, I don't even, if you know this, Dr. Lou, but like ultimately for you to be a doctor is already a success story. But for you to do what you're doing, there really is no excuses because if you're working that much, because a lot of times people say, oh, Chris, I don't have time. I'm like, look, this guy, Dr. Liu, was a resident doctor, has all this to do, literally saving lives. And yet people complain and whine, oh, I don't have time. I'm like, you're a perfect example of how someone, if you're motivated, if you're determined, if you focus on your passions, but the passion has to relate to actual scalable industries like real estate, then you can do those things. Now... Do you think that any person or most people can actually get into real estate and actually make money from it? Oh, definitely. I think, I think any entrepreneur, I think real estate is one of the easiest ones to get into. Um, the, the, everybody needs a home. Everybody has a house. Everybody needs a place to live in. And it's actually pretty easy to get started in your first deal. You can either go and 
rent out your room on Airbnb, buy a small condo, buy a single family, and so on and so forth. And it, real estate is actually very multifaceted. There's so many uh, uh, encompassing features that are very attractive. So either whether you like the renovation, whether you like the financing, whether you like the tenant management, it's, it's a very scalable business. That's great. And what about when there are certain dips and obviously everything's a cycle. So right now it's building and booming and you've been doing this for about 10 years. I mean, is, is it's also dangerous because I have friends that have lost money in real estate, you know? So how do you prevent some of those losses? Yeah. So one is uh, I'll always start small. So I was fortunate, you know, the Houston real estate market wasn't like California, wasn't like, like Las Vegas, um, Arizona, those areas, Florida, where people just flipping like crazy and put prices were overinflated. So one is just start small, just but like I just chose to focus on uh condos um some people just want to rent out the room to airbnb so they'll always just start small the other thing is hedge hedge your hedge your bets always because that's what trading stocks taught me was to always hedge um either in down times or up times so you always protect your investment either one is through insurance you know i'm a lot of people call me a control freak because I'm, I'm just always thinking about what is the risk that that's because of my medical background as a <laughs> surgeon. I'm always afraid of getting sued and so forth. So always have insurance, always make sure you're hiring the best guys. Um, tenant selection is also huge. Um, make sure you do a credit check, a background check. I always interview my tenants for an hour, make sure they're stable. I always select up and coming professional students because these are the smartest guys. They have a lot of integrity. They're here to study and they're not here to create trouble. So now that's great. I love how systematized and specific you are, because again, based on the fact that you're a trained surgeon, it's great because so many people, they want to do things, but they don't have that step by step process. In your case, you literally wrote a book about that, right? What was the book called again? I wrote a book called how I quit my lucrative medical career and achieve financial freedom using real estate and how you can too. Awesome. And even though people that are listening might not be doctors, but really a lot of your skills, I would say 90% of those skills are just as applicable for anyone that wants to change a life. Because the thing that you shared about the risk factor, every time I've ever talked, learned, or researched or interviewed people that are billionaires, they always say they always watch the downside, meaning every single one of these portfolio managers, these hedge fund people that, that manage billions of dollars, their single most important advice is what you said, Chris is that you have to watch, it's more about not losing money than making money. You know, like you wanna make money obviously, but they're super, right. super, super focused on what you just did, which is the risk management, because if you're only focusing on the upside and you don't focus on the downside, well, that cycle will come down. It's just inevitable. Yeah. So it's a great piece of advice you shared and it's phenomenal that, that you have a systemized process. And we only have a few more minutes. I know you have a, a very specific message for doctors what specific message do you want to share with doctors relative to what you're doing now? Well, my specific message for doctors is that you have to go into medicine for the right reason. If you're going in it because you love either the practice of medicine or you love patients or you love treating patients, the medicine is great. If you go into medicine because, you know, either your parents pushed you into it or society or your spouse or you think, it's a stable income and you make a lot of money. Um, these the times are changing where the malpractice rates are uh, skyrocketing. Your liabilities being um, skyrocketing as well. The insurance reimbursements are lower. Your patients are getting more demanding, your hours. So there's a lot of sucking on your time and your energy. So if you go in because you love it, that's great. But if you Go in it because of alternative reasons. It depends on how well you can weather the, the stress. And I'm here, I, I've been through everything, and I'm here to help doctors successfully transition from a burnout career, dissatisfied career, into one that's more fulfilling, uh, one with more potential, more growth. Awesome. The last thing I want to share with our guests is, Dr. Lu, what's one thing you most enjoy about your life now? that you didn't have when you were a doctor? One is the, just, I'm 
I got my life back. I, <laughs> I have more. I have all. I can do whatever I want. I travel whenever I want. I can take off whenever I want. Uh, the financial freedom is. I don't. I no longer have to rely on a paycheck. I do what I love. I spend time with people I love. Um, so it's just really. I got my time and my life and my freedom back. Awesome. How can our guests stay in touch with you, Dr. Liu? Uh, they can either con contact me through so social media at chl1357, or they can email me at chl1357 at gmail.com. Great. Thanks so much for your time, Dr. Liu, and we appreciate you on our Gifters podcast. Right. Thanks so much, Chris. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app, free for iOS and Android.